Okay, thank you for checking out this screencast on how to install WordPress on your own server. I'm going to I'm going to do this, make it short and sweet. But we're going to start from scratch. Uh, the first thing you need is web hosting and if you don't have any web hosting, there's a really awesome deal down in the description uh under the heading uh, cheap web hosting. Uh it's from uh, the people that I personally use for every website that I ever build, every website I design, every one I sell. Um, and uh, they have great introductory deals for, for new webmasters. And I'll be using their hosting to show you this tutorial. The first thing you need to do to uh, begin after you've got some web hosting is go to WordPress.org. There's a button here on WordPress.org. Download WordPress. This is the newest version, 3.5.1. We're going to click that. I'm going to click this here. So we do want to download that. Save that to your computer somewhere. And we're done. All right. I'm going to let that be for just a second. We now, we now need to create ourselves a database, a MySQL database. So once you've got some hosting, you log into your cPanel and scroll down to MySQL databases. Okay. Now we need to make a database name. So let's call this one test. Okay. So we've just added the data database David Bat underscore test. I want to copy this. Minimize my window. And I just save that, okay? Now I'm going to make my uh, username probably tester, just for the heck of it. Make it easy, easy. Let's go back. Scroll down a little bit. You'll see that new database has been added without a user yet. We're going to make one. See, MySQL users add new users. We're going to call this one tester. And we're going to make our password, let's say, tester. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Tester. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now I want to make sure I save that. Tester. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now we've got our username figured out. We've got our password figured out. Now we're going to go down here and to click create user. We don't want to remember that password. Okay. So David Batterson. Uh, David Bat underscore tester is the user with this password. Okay. Let me make sure that I just go ahead and copy that in case there's any typos. Okay, go back. Now we want to give this user a profile. Tester is going to be added to test. Add goes to this screen. We're going to give him all privileges. So make changes. All right, good deal. Now we want to go back to cPanel Home to our file manager. What we're going to do now is make us a directory called test. Um, don't get confused about this part. If you're uh, if you're going to install WordPress and you want your whatever your website name is .com to be the uh, where people would find your website, then you don't want to put it in a subdirectory. You just literally just in, just uh, upload WordPress to your root folder, your public HTML folder. But I want to call this blog test because we're making a video called test. Now I want to minimize this screen because you'll see this folder that I just made right here. Okay, let's minimize this screen. If you don't have FileZilla, I'll put the link to the FileZilla FTP client in the description below underneath the heading FTP. We're going to go ahead and log in here. This is my website via FTP client. Go to public HTML right here. Scroll down until you find that folder we just created called test. Check it out. There it is. All right. Now what we want to do is go into my downloads folder. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. Let's scroll, slide this over a little bit. Now I want to add this. I just dragged and dropped that into this little window here. This is our Quaid files. Now I'm going to upload that WordPress.com uh, um, folder to my test folder. And we'll wait and let this upload while I have a cup of coffee. Or a drink of coffee.
Okay, we have successfully uploaded the folder. As you see, it disappears from the window, and it goes over to the successful transfers uh, window. So we're good to go. We can close that out. Let's go back up to our uh, browser here and type in that web address. Now look, it takes us to the uh, test URL. You can see that I've uploaded WordPress uh, zip file. So let's open this. Now we're going to go ahead and extract this. Now you'll see that it extracts, but it's going to create another folder. Watch. Okay. I'm going to delete this. Open up that folder. Select all. And I'm going to move all these from the WordPress folder within the test directory to just the test directory. And they disappear. Now I'm going to go up one level, and you see them all there. Now we re refresh this page, and you'll see that we can begin uh, installing WordPress. Okay, now used to, you had to create your own config file and edit lines of code and add your password and all that. We don't want to do that anymore because it just takes more time. So everything's good to go. Let's install. Okay, database name. This is why I created this not notepad a little while ago. The database name is davidbat underscore test. Okay, now, depending on your server, you will have to use... Uh, a prefix, okay? Um, some of them don't require it. Mine does require it. So, you'll want to make sure that you you know whether or not you're supposed to or not. Password is the tester012345 password right here that we created earlier. Let's enter that right there. We're going to have to remember that. But it's already in my clipboard. Now, these are only important for the database name. It has nothing to do with your username. We'll create that in a minute. Run the install. Okay, the site title. We're going to call this our test blog. Test uh, username is going to be tester just because, but you can create any username. It has nothing to do with the MySchool database username or password or anything like that. But I'm just going to go ahead and use the same ones just because. So our site title is, we'll call this the test blog the test blog all right username is going to be tester my email is going to be davyboy31205 at yahoo.com you can use whatever you want this little this right here allows the uh this the um wordpress to ping the search engine immediately once you create your blog and uh, make your first page or post i always let that leave that check mark checked Okay, log in. Now we know our name is test, tester, with that password that we just created. So I want it to remember me. No, I don't. But it'll let us, let us log in. You, you'll want it to remember you when you do yours. Now, here's the welcome window. It shows you pretty much everything that's going on in WordPress uh, to get you started. Um, it'll already make a, a default post. I always delete those right out of the gate. Don't waste any time with that. As soon as I'm done with that, I go to pages and delete this page because these pages are ridiculous. So, let's go see what our blog looks like. The test blog, no post to display. It's not surprising because it's brand new. But anyways, uh, you see it says the test blog, just another WordPress site. Go into settings. You can change all that. You can put whatever you want, depending on what your site is about. All right. Blah, blah, blah. Go over here and refresh this. Now it'll say testing everything one test at a time. There we go. All right. Now the next thing we need to do is make a post and add a good theme. Uh, maybe a logo. Um, some plugins. Uh... That'll be another video, actually, to help you with SEO. Uh, but you know what? I'm, since we're on the subject, the first thing you ought to do is install Jetpack. I delete these. Always have. Always will. First thing I do is install Jetpack by WordPress. You can search for it here. Uh, 
That's not it. I think it's all one word. Jetpackbywordpress.com. You want to install that. That helps you keep track of your stats, your website visitors, blah, 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 uh, where they came from. Uh, tells you if they've clicked any links on your blog. Uh, tells you which page that they've visited. Uh, and it keeps a snapshot of your traffic and your stats throughout the, the life of your blog. Okay. Another plugin that you'd really want to add would be XML sitemaps. Google XML sitemaps. You'd want to install that. Um, this will help uh, keep Google informed of, of your entire site by creating a sitemap usually every day at a certain time. Um, it also helps to get your blog indexed um, a little bit quicker than just than not having the plugin at all. Um, those are the two plugins, the jetpackbywordpress.com and the Google XML sitemaps. Uh, those are the two plugins that I, I definitely recommend starting off with with any blog. And, uh, you know, pretty much every site these days is, is based upon a WordPress installation or movable type or some kind of blog platform. And uh, it's, it's just the most easy, user-friendly type of a way to build your own website without paying a web designer, you know, to build one for you. And, you know, you can get custom themes, um, premium themes, which cost a little bit of money. But, uh, you know, there's all sorts of free WordPress themes all over the Internet. You'll, I'm sure you'll find one that'll suit your fancy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but definitely install jetpackbywordpress.com and the Google XML sitemaps to keep you uh, to get your site into Google as soon as possible. Keep your post as relevant as possible to your overall website topic, and um, basically share it with everybody that that has time to read it. Um, share it all over the place. Uh, Stumble upon is a good way to get a little bit of traffic. Pinterest is a great way to get traffic. Facebook, Twitter. Um, you name it. If you're the better you are at social media, the more successful you'll be online. And I appreciate you watching this video. I'm gonna cut it short. Please rate and subscribe, and please leave a comment if you have a question. Thanks.